Hello and welcome to the Widener World of Sports Podcast. This is episode number five. My name is Greg Ficka, the Director of Athletic Communications here at Widener University. This morning we're joined by three of our senior student athletes from the fall, winter, and spring sports. Sitting on my right, Kaylee Cristello of Women's Lacrosse. Across from me, Pat Holden of Men's Basketball. And on my left, Josh Whitty from Men's Soccer. This episode will reminisce on their four years of being a collegiate athlete and bring up fun memories they've encountered here at Widener. Pat, you had a fun season with kind of traveling to the NCAA tournament. Why don't you get us started? Uh, yeah, no problem. Um, so, jumping into our season, um, this year we had a lot of high expectations for our team. Um, we had a lot of fifth-year guys, uh, also a lot of seniors, a ton of upperclassmen. Um, so, looking into the year, you know, we wanted to accomplish a lot. We felt like we did. Um, and one word to describe our season was just fun. I had a ton of fun. Um, towards the end of the year, um, our three our three things we focused on each game was connection, energy, and effort. And those are three three things that no matter how you're playing, it should always be the same. So I felt like towards the end of the year, um, when we started going on our little run we had, um, our team was very, very connected um, on all levels, on the floor, off the floor, um, in the locker room. And uh, obviously having a couple transfers coming, uh, Dom Dunn, um, he was awesome this year, great guy to play with, um, and then a couple of seniors, Kenny Lewis was great. Um, he has like a career of almost 800 rebounds, um, and then uh, you have guys like Steve Matlack, John Shank, um, that just did, did everything he had to do on both ends of the floor. Um, and then, you know, we also had a lot of adversity as well. Um, you had a guy like AJ Sawyers who came back for his fifth year, he blew his knee out, and then uh, our leading scorer from last year, Matt Valerio, um, led us on both ends of the floor. Um, preseason blew his knee out as well. So, going into the year, um, it felt like a lot of the guys had a lot to prove, and uh, we ended up accomplishing more than, than uh, a lot of people expected. So, it was a lot of fun. Um, and then uh, the conference championship game was awesome. There was a ton of energy in the gym. Um, it, was, it was that moment, you know, I've been here, this is my fifth year here. And it was just amazing. Um, energy in the gym. Um, it was. It was. It was truly, truly uh, one of those moments where you just, you just have to embrace it, and you remember it for the rest of your life. Truly. Um, and then going to the tournament was great. Uh, we didn't really get the bid we wanted. We, we played up in New Hampshire, King State. It was a long, long drive. It took us about seven, eight hours to get there. Um, we played a very tough team. Actually, their name is Tufts. They're in the, uh, the NASCAC, but. Uh, they were really good, but um, other than that, it was it was it was awesome. Um, I know Josh also played in uh, their championship game as well. Um, I don't know if he wants to talk about that a little bit. Maybe the energy that the team felt or whatever. Yeah. Uh, before we touch on that, I had a quick question for you regarding yeah. energy. One of the three keys you touched on was energy. Yeah. And how do you keep that in your locker room among your guys? Uh, it's just one of those things where you have to just. It's tough because the emotions of the game they get so high and so low sometimes depending on uh, how the game's going. But um, energy is just one of those things where you bring each other together. Together, you know, during the game, uh, in between timeouts, um, you know, without the coach there, in between free throws, and you're just like, hey, like, you know, we really have to pick it up right here. Like this possession is important. And, and actually, during the year, we uh, we uh, do this thing called three kills, right? So it's three stops in a row and um, a bucket. So if you had three stops in a row and a bucket, it's a kill for us. So it was just one of those things where we'd come together and say, hey, we got to get killed here. Um, we got to do this. We got to got to increase our effort. And as I mentioned, you know, we have a lot of upperclassmen this year. And it was just one of those things where we were just so connected that we just felt like we could just turn it on when we really, really needed to. Cool. cool. Any highlights? Any, like, moment that you were like, wow, that, that was my Oh yeah, hundred uh, percent. The our semifinal game. Actually, you know, a couple of games before we started playoffs, it was important for seeding. Uh, we played Eastern Home, which was a big game. That that was uh, to get second, and they jumped down to third. Um, we all just shot the lights out that game. We shot like sixty percent from three. Uh, we just felt we just felt like we just outplayed them. That game was awesome. It was, it was, it was really fun. And then uh, our playoff game home against Hood was was awesome as well. Uh, we played them two weeks prior to that, and 
um, we beat them pretty good. And it was just one of those things where, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a conference, there is a great conference. So you hear, you hear a lot of that, what other teams are saying and, uh, what, how they feel the game went and, and whatnot. And, you know, on our end, they, they were told that they were going to come here and beat us, beat us, uh, after, after we just beat them here. So it was just one of those things where it was just a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Cool. Yeah. How about for women's lacrosse? Uh, that's been a huge thing of ours is energy right now too. Like it's on and off the field. So if we're energetic on the field and we're, the bench gets into it, our celebrations are huge thing. I know you guys score a lot, so I don't think you can attest to the celebrations after a goal or anything, but I know you probably can because you guys do have low scoring games. But if we have the energy, then we have so much momentum on the field. It's so like we feed off of the girls on the sideline. So, like, no matter who it is, there's every single person. Like, when we score, it's everybody that's playing a role in it, which is awesome. That's really cool. Now, have you ever been exposed to days where the girls are a little slow? And then my question on top of that is how do you bring that energy on those slow days? Because it's natural to come out sluggish sometimes. Yeah, so we have been struggling with that right before we got to conference play. Our first quarter was always a little – it was never our best one, which we knew that. But we knew coming into conference play, we had to change that around because you needed a whole 60 minutes playing. Like, if we didn't do well in the first 15, that could, especially with our games, like, they can go back and forth no matter who the team is. So I think um, once we got to conference play, we really did realize that we have to get out there and get going right away. So we made sure that we were cheering each other on from the first draw. We made sure everybody was, you know, getting up, getting excited no matter who was the person scoring. So I think that helped a lot, which you can't ask for anything more than that than to come into conference play and start playing the way that you're supposed to play. And so far it's working out, doing it in conference. So. Let's go. There you go. Yeah. How, how many more games do you have left in conference? I think we have about six. Which, so we play again tomorrow. We play Hood, which should be a really good game. And then we don't play again until Albright, which is going to be a huge game as our as our head coach um, is now our assistant coach, and she is from Albright. So she's about five years now out of Albright. So that game's always played like a national championship, no matter what the year is. So we're excited to go head to her old home turf and show them what what we got. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, does the uh, playoffs work the same? I mean, the basketball, it's, it's um, the five teams make it. There's a playing game. Uh, does, does that, is that the same with the cross or is it different? Yeah, we same. also do that. So next year it's actually going to be different because um, Lebanon Valley is leaving the conference and then only four teams are going to make it. But um, this year five teams make it again. And then there's a playing game on Monday and then the Wednesday and then Saturday. So depending on where we see it, it could be three games in a week or it could be two. But we're hoping to get at least third. I'm hoping third this year. Um. Is yours the same too? Do you guys have a playing game? Uh, for like Mac play? Yeah. Uh, so we'll have you know our regular season play, um, which is planned out in pre like in advance, um, and then we'll have conference play, and then based off of the points we score in conference determines um, how we continue. Like tiebreakers and stuff. Or yeah, yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. So so yeah. So we'll go from there, um, and yeah. I mean, this past year, I don't. Wider men's soccer did a phenomenal job. We had one of the best seasons. Um, I'm really proud of the guys. We have a young, uh, group, good, good group of guys that just the energy's there every time. Um, there's no negative um, aspects to our team. Uh, everyone's very close. Um, and everyone takes pride in the work that they do, which I think says a lot. Um, because it doesn't matter um, if you do it right every time, but if you're able to learn from that and grow, Thing. That's pretty huge. Um, so, yeah, I'm very excited to see, you know, now that we're kind of rolling out, well, I'm done. I'm, we're rolling out of here. I'm going to definitely keep tabs and see how these guys do because I know it's only good things. So, yeah. take, us through, take us through real quick the uh, last, like, six or seven games of your guys' season. I know you guys were killing it towards the end. Obviously, made a championship game. Uh, there was, like, a lot of energy, I felt like, like around campus and stuff about you guys, you know, like, because, I mean, obviously, the side is a great team, but um, it felt like I like I was like, oh, man, like, soccer's doing really well. Like, 
in the fog and whatnot. So take, take, like, take us through a little bit of what you felt or what the team was felt. Yeah, it it felt good to um, get that recognition for the team um, and also have the team on the same page. I feel like um, this, not the first season, but definitely was a standout season where everyone was on the same page and everyone had their role and everyone knew what their role was um, going into it. Uh, each and every game um, and then also like having that deep connection on a player to player level you could tell who was out of it that, a certain day because we're human no one's going to be there 100% of the time perfect all the time but from the coaching staff from the players everyone was there to pick each other up and kind of get each other out of that rut before that uh, first whistle blows so that every game you're rolling in locked in um, and know, know exactly what you have to do. So that was, that was really cool. Um, and then the guys just performed. You know, it was all that classroom time, watching video and putting in those extra hours and playing pickup, even and doing the work when it's not, uh, that's like not needed, not mandatory, really showed for, those, for us guys. So I think that was huge. Just making that a part of you know, every day flow, every day, like every month, even if you're in season or not in season, guys are, guys are getting together, hanging out, being together, working out, um, doing all the little things that, you know, add up and make, it, make a big result in the end. Right, right. Now, you mentioned film. I don't know, it it's, must be a little different for you guys. So for us, you know, we watch film on the team we're playing, and, you know, we see one or two players that are like, I mean, these guys can really hurt us. So we're going to do X, Y, and Z to really take them out of the game or do whatever. Is it different in lacrosse or soccer? Because it's such a big field. You guys uh, focus on one guy and be like, hey, listen, like we're going to face guard or we're going to do something a little different to throw them off. I, you guys, I don't know. What, what do you guys yeah, do? So, do? Um, that's like, that was one of my favorite things just because you can figure out what you need to do going into the games. And our coach does like a phenomenal job like dissecting each of those games. And so, like you, we do usually have, like, a few, it depends on the team that we play, but usually she'll put, like, at least five girls that are going to be, like, a threat to us. Usually there's one or two that stand out a lot more than the others. So we know going into the game, like, we could have matchups, especially with height is a huge thing, too. I play defense. I'm a taller girl. And then we have other defenders that are a little bit shorter. So we know going into those games, like, not to put – one of the shorter girls on one of these girls that can shoot right over their head. So we really pay attention to that stuff. But I think, oddly enough, even though you guys only have about five guys on the court and we have 12, we still do have, like, two people that we kind of focus on. We know, okay, if we shut them down, we'll have a better opportunity and have a better outcome of this game. Gotcha. How about for you? Is it about the same thing? Well, not to give any, any secrets away. Yeah, yeah, yeah no okay. secrets. <laughs> um, so, yeah, obviously it's, you know, key, pl- key players on the other team, tactics. Um, and then a lot of it also comes down to self-reflection on a player, you know, player, you know, things I could have done better uh, or someone else could have done better. But also as a team, what we can do collectively, I mean, we can break that into defense, midfield, attack, that sort of thing. Um, so a lot of it's self-reflection in addition to looking at what they do, um, players that you're going to match up with, maybe if they're right or left-footed, their strengths or weakness. So we'll have a good idea of um, what they're going to do um, on you know resets throughout the game, but also probably what um, the player you're matching up against will do. Um, for example, if I'm guarding you, I know you're like right-handed or left-handed. Right, right. So, right. I got you. Um, but yeah. Okay, yeah, I just didn't hey, that's interesting. I just didn't know how that would work. I mean, I know in soccer there's... Offensive schemes, defensive schemes, you know, you can be more defensive or you can be more offensive and stuff. But I wasn't sure if you pinpoint, you know, certain personnel, but that, that might answer the question. Now, is there anything in film that uh, you really benefited from? Oh, yeah, all the time. Your... Yeah, yeah. Well, personally, I mean, so we broke it down kind of how, how you said personal. Personal, I don't know what the word is. But we, uh, like, I would look at myself, I would see what I have to do different, um, whether it be, uh, you know, getting the guys in the right position or uh, doing something off the ball that, that doesn't really matter to the play or it would be more of a team-oriented thing where it's like, oh, we should have done this year rather than, than what we did. Um, and then, yeah, we scout every game. 
Um, so going the game, we know who, who the other team's leading scorers are, the best defenders, um, you know, what they like to do, sort of like sort of like what you, what you guys were explaining. Um, but yeah, that's that's typically how it would work for us. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Just uh, just because we have so many more people on the field, I do think that we would have like such a more in depth thing going for us. But it's all around the same, I guess. Uh, I remember. Yeah. So uh, now that, well, I guess lacrosse is still playing, but now that basketball's done, what are your plans? What are you, what's on your agenda? What are you doing after school? That sort of thing. Um, I was thinking about, um, I, I was applying to a lot of places, but um, the draft's coming up, so I think I'm going to put myself in the draft. And no, I'm only kidding. <laughs> uh, no, I'm actually, um, I, I'm working right now. I did an internship for a uh my assistant coach on um, the team and he works at a, a steel firm. So I've, I've been doing um, just four hours a day, three hours a day um, at his place. And I really like it. I like the environment. Um, uh, I like what I do sort of every day. I'm learning a lot. It's interesting. Um, it's not monotonous. Uh, so he offered me a sales position there. Um, so I think I'm going to do that. I want to stay in the area in Philly. Um, I'm from Cape May, New Jersey, so I like to spend my summers and weekends down the shore. And so it just seemed like a good opportunity, something entry level. And that, those are my plans right now. I'm playing it by year, but I, I feel like I'm, I'm making the right move for myself or by yourself. That's exciting. That's really exciting. Good for you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so similar to you, I uh, started out with like internships and co-ops, trying to just gain experience, kind of see what direction I want to take, what I like, what I didn't like, that sort of thing. So I'll be working at Northrop Grumman as a mechanical engineer. Um, uh, I start July, um, and then that's a three-year program. So they kind of same along the same concept for each year, like each uh, year of, those, of that three-year program. They float me down around to uh, different districts of like engineering. So my first year I'll do manufacturing. I get to see what that's all about. Second year's design. Third year I get to decide. Um, so yeah. I'm really excited. Oh, congratulations. That's awesome. Thanks. How about you? Yeah. Well, we're still in season over here, so I'm just taking it one day at a time. Yeah. As I literally, like, I have only, like, one or two classes a day, but lacrosse still takes up more time than you think. Like, you think on the schedule, you see, like, oh, two-hour practice, but that doesn't take into consideration, I think, like, the time that you have to put in before or after for all that stuff. Yeah, training but, room. Yeah. Training room. Yeah. Every day. Everything, yeah. <laughs> but after um, after that, I'm gonna gonna graduate in May and get into medical sales and medical device sales, that type of thing. Probably take a month or two off, though, you know. Definitely. Give myself <laughs> some time. Um, but what do you guys think was like one of your like top tier memories over these four years, either academically or athletically? Josh, I'll let you take that one first. <laughs> I don't know how to think about it. Um, so right off the right off the bat is for me it's Costa Rica. Um, the soccer team just took recently just took a trip over spring break to Costa Rica where we will, where we were able to play some games, do some community service, and just focus on the team, just focus on the guys and that connection, and kind of take a second to have fun, but also to learn you know new cultures and. I've never been outside the U.S., so that trip was really cool. That's really awesome. Cool for me. That's awesome. All right, now that you say that, it's coming to me a little bit. Freshman year, we went down to Miami for uh, right before winter break, and uh, it was awesome. Like I've never been to Miami before. You know, it was it was South Beach, so it was like insane. Uh, just the, the environment down there, uh, the hotel we stayed at was beautiful. Uh, it was it was it was actually crazy, um, and then brought. The other memory probably would, would be this year, um, you know, making a tournament, winning a championship, um, you know, being with the guys. Uh, so I would say those are two of my fondest memories in sports. I'd have to think about it for school, but yeah, I don't know. What about you, Kaylee? I would have to say um, my sophomore year, you know, COVID time, so we actually did get to play a modified season, which we were lucky enough to do. And so we played Stevenson. And, you know, like, nobody had fall ball or anything, so we're coming into the season just looking to do whatever we can to shake things up. And we ended up going to Stevenson for a game. It was their senior day, which nobody likes to play um, on their senior day. 
So we got there. The game's already starting late. The refs didn't show up on time. So everything's going, like, the wrong way. Um, but we ended up going into overtime with them. And it was, like, anticipated to be, like, a blowout. Like, nobody expected us to be competing in that game just because of how strong their program was. They had um, a girl, Caroline Murphy. She was ridiculous on the field. So we get into overtime, win the draw, and um, Amber Brett, who graduated last year, scored. So we beat them on their senior day. <laughs> and um, their coach actually did an interview after. And she said that the reason that her team lost that game was because of our bench and how loud and how much energy we had. So I think that like kind of set the precedent for like the years following of how our energy needs to be and how much energy does play a role in winning a game like that. That's really cool that that's how that came about. Because yeah. sometimes I feel like it's kind of hard to um, get those who are not playing active, you know, feeling that, yeah. you know, I am, They're part I of have, them. yeah, I have a role yeah. to fulfill, you know, um, even though it's, it's not directly right then in the moment, which to them it may seem, but in reality, they could be cheering, screaming, you know, on the bench, and then they are in that moment. Yeah. In that time. So that, having that culture is really cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, and I also wanted to backtrack, uh, real quick, um, cause you were, you referred to, um, how much time sports take, right? Okay. And then in addition to like school and whatnot. Which I found one thing that was really cool was um, this past year, Widener Athletics has getting uh, professors involved. Have you guys Oh, seen yeah. This? Having them come out to games, coming out to practices, kind of seeing, like, you know, these are your students that you see in the classroom, but out of the classroom, they're out here for another, you know, two hours on the schedule, but really it's, three, three and a half, maybe even four, depending on how much recovery you got. Because you got to show up, you got to get ready, and then recover after. So, yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts about that? What do you think? Uh, it comes down to management, your time management, I feel like. Um, you know, I've, I've been fortunate enough, I feel like the professors I've had that I've, you know, talked or communicated with about different things, especially in season, you know, they've been very helpful for me. Uh, you know, give me time to do things or, uh, if I needed extra help and stuff, um, but I was just, for me personally, I would just try and get things done. If I knew an assignment was coming up or if I knew I had an exam coming up, I would try and get things done. At least I'd be a week, week in front of, of what was actually due, sort of. I felt like that worked out pretty, pretty good for me. Um, but in terms of the academic and um, athletic balance, it's tough. It really is. I think a lot of kids should consider that before starting a sport. Absolutely. You don't think about it. You're like, oh, this is, you know, this division three, blah, blah, blah. But listen, like, it's tough. It really is. Um, I don't know what your thoughts on it. Yeah, I think that while the teachers are, like, very involved in the sports, and especially now, which you guys stole Dr. Brockman from us. That's what we were <laughs> going to ask, too. Um, it's nice to see, like, now, like, when teachers are getting involved and coming to a practice, because I think then they really do realize, too. Because the teachers can say, yeah, like, you can have extensions and stuff, but to the extent they don't always know what goes on at practice and stuff and how, like, hard people are working. So I think getting them involved this year has been awesome because they're coming to practices, they're coming to games, and they're, like, also just a mentor there. So whenever we have questions or anything, like, you always know you have at least one person on your side that you can go to to ask questions for, which has been awesome. But even, I got to give Dr. Rotnick a big shout-out here because... He comes to most of our games, and he's not even our um, advisor. He came to our senior day, sends us email. He watches a lot of our games. He's a big supporter. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely really impressed with – I also had him as a professor, or he was my professor. And um, I'm really impressed with not just him, but the faculty here at Widener, how, how involved they are. You know, I can, it's really nice that I can just send an email and be like, you know, I'm struggling. Any chance you can meet with me for like 30 minutes and we can just discuss this, like bounce ideas off. And almost literally every time um, they make time for me. So I think that's really cool. Um, yeah. Compared to some maybe some other schools that are a little bigger and you're struggling <laughs> to have a conversation with the professor. So I think that's cool. Yeah. yeah. And then um, in addition to like school and whatnot, 
you guys have any like senior projects or any, anything that's that's a, um, a big I, assignment coming up? Yeah, sort of. I mean, I'm, I'm a fifth year, so last year I just did a, an internship sort of in the summertime, so I didn't have to do a, a big project, thank God. But um, yeah, the only, the only big the only big assignment I have left personally is like a 15 page paper. I haven't typed the paper since. <laughs> freshman year I mean I'm a business guy so it, like you know we, we'll do like reports and things like that but like I'm I'm just not a big writer so it's kind of, it's actually been tough for me I mean I got like a couple pages done but it's due it's, it's, it's coming up <laughs> Dude, it's coming up on me I don't know that I'm struggling right now what about yourself Kelly? that's I'm actually um lucky right now I'm a biology major so I usually have labs and stuff that I have to write 15 plus page reports about a different lab but I'm in the decline right now because I took all the classes I needed to take last semester. So this semester I got to pick. So I picked up a minor in psychology. Which love a good psychology class, not too much writing at all, <laughs> which I could do without. So right now I'm kind of in the good of things. I'm lucky I don't really have any intense projects, but I know you, Josh, you do have a big project this yeah, whole year, right? I'm definitely, yeah. So engineering right now. Started? Yeah, so I have, I have a senior project. Yeah, right. Yeah, I have a senior project with uh, Boeing. So uh, okay. me and my, I'm, a, I'm a team of uh, four other engineers, um, and pretty much the whole year we just like develop a rotor test stand. So it's like it's, a, it's essentially a piece of test equipment to test helicopter blades, the forces on it, and stuff like that. Which Boeing has their own, of course. Um, but Wagner has their own version of it. That students every year, it's an ongoing project. So every year we're updating and working on it, that sort of thing. Kind of learning the engineering process behind it. Interesting. So that's definitely been a lot. In addition to all the other classes that that's going on, um, the transition from exams and homeworks, that's kind of, it's not so much that. I mean, that, that of course is still there, but it's right. more project based right now. Because what are you going to do in the real world when you graduate? Your projects, your boss is going to come up with a project. It's not going to be exams. Right, right. And that kind of goes back to your time management, like doing stuff early, getting your teammates, you know, on the same page early so that you guys are not in crunch time. Like, yeah, the night yeah of. we got to do this. Yeah. 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 Because then usually when one thing's due, a whole bunch of stuff's due. Yep. So that, that's kind of, that kind of leads into um, why, you know, my perspective is I'm done, right? You're in it right now. Your mind's in all the things you gotta do. Now things coming up, but from a perspective of someone who's done, I'm so thankful for uh, athletics because that time management skill is by far. You'll have it forever. Yeah, and it's kind of ironic because when you're in it, you're in it, and you have games, and you have school, and you have all this stuff. All your like. In the back of your head, you're just like, I just need to get through this week. I just need to get through today. Um, well, when that's done, you you realize how much time you really have. Yeah. Um, and then to then use that time in a productive manner, um, it's it's a challenge. But it is. It is. Um, it's a that tool you will always have with you. Yeah. I'm so thankful for. It. I don't yeah. know if you guys feel the same way. Or oh, absolutely. That. Yeah, definitely. I think that especially. We have like a fall ball and then we have like our regular season and people will say all the time, oh, you probably love fall ball. You have so much more time. And in like a sense, I'm like, no, because when I'm in season, you're forced to like actually sit down and be like, okay, we have this day, this day that we're traveling two plus hours. So I need to get this project or this assignment done by that day. And so I think playing a sport honestly has kept like me in track more than if I didn't, just because when you don't have as much time, you don't push things off as much. You kind of sit down and you're like, okay, I need to do this right now. Mm-hmm. I think it's important, especially out of school, as you were, as you were saying, Josh, um, every interview I've had, they've always asked, that's the first thing that, 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 that they would asked me about, oh, like, how'd you manage this? How'd you manage that? How'd you juggle so many things? And that's what they want to hear. They want to hear you're able to do those things because that's, it's a, it's an actual, so it's a life skill, you know, especially for you know, an employer and, and you're an employee. So I'm, I'm thankful for that, absolutely, because it's really taught me that. Yeah, for sure. And then I know another question they'll ask you about is like leadership. Uh, right? They want to know, yeah. they want to know your experiences, how you, if you're a team player, how you communicate and work with others. 
because everything's again going to be a project based. You're not going to be like on your own, right? Um, so throughout your college career and leadership along the lines of leadership, what were some challenges, highlights? What do you think really creates a good leader? Um, so I'll, I'll go back to my freshman year. I thought we had some guys here that were great, really good guys, really good guys on and off the floor. I just my my different style is is you know in terms of yelling and screaming at guys and and getting on each other. For me, it's more so like hey, like it should be more of a learning thing. Like listen, this is what you should be doing. Pull me aside and say hey, like you should have done this or you should have done this. But just just let me know it's not okay that I messed up. But the yelling and the thing is more of like a theatrical thing rather than a learning thing. So I felt like as I got older and guys came in under me, I thought that was the way to go. I thought it was more so, you know, pull them aside, put an arm around them. Hey, look, like on the floor during practice, you should be doing this. Or this is the play you should have made. Like throw that one more instead of shooting that because he's got a better shot, you know. So um, in terms of in terms of the leadership role, I but. This year especially, it, it made it really easy for everybody because all the all, all the upperclassmen we had, um, um, it wasn't just on myself or it wasn't just on Kenny or Don or Peter or any of those guys. It was it was kind of sort of everyone holding each other reliable and accountable. So um, in terms of leadership, I think I think we all did a really good job, especially this year on my team um, of. Of keeping that standard high and, and keeping each other accountable. I don't know about what did, what did you yeah. guys do? I think that um, sometimes with girls, emotions can run a little bit right. higher. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and sometimes people think it's more of like you're targeting them. So I think in my four years, I've learned that like there definitely isn't the way you say things from that. Just, But even like we've had so many different girls like lead our team in the three years that, or the four years that I've been here. And I think that each person has led in a different way. But also, I think a big thing is, like, the girls that aren't so-called, like, leaders, too. Like, we've always had girls that were only a year above me that they were they were sophomores, and so sometimes it was usually, like, a senior or something that was a captain. And so I think, like, even just as sophomores, like, they were leading in different ways than the seniors were, too, which was awesome. So I think that having a team that there's, like, multiple different people in a position to be a leader is like awesome too just especially for the younger girls looking up because they know you don't have to just be a senior to be a leader you could be a freshman and people can still look up to you which is awesome mm -hmm. definitely and that culture that's associated with that yeah you know, it's it takes a lot to build a culture like that and having yeah. a culture and set already there that you know as a freshman coming in you kind of just maybe take for granted a little bit but you're exposed to right off the bat is is huge yeah. Um, because I definitely learned that, like, over the years that, you know, leadership does not come with the role that you are given, like, or the position you're given, right? Yeah. You don't become the CEO and then you're, all right, now I got to put my leader yeah, yeah, on right. that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so I think that's, that's uh, big. And then I, what you touched on was um, the style of leading. Right? Yeah. Being true to yourself and not being the yeller if you're not a yeller or, um, I think that's those are two big keys that a leader like a leader needs to understand. Um, maybe not even understand, but just like do yeah. right uh, and know. And a lot of that comes down just to gets passed down from who's your coach and who you look up to. Yeah, so, yeah I think that yeah, as as you said, the style. I think it's just gaining the respect of your teammates. I mean, you guys are all relatively the same age. Um, you guys all want the same thing, common goals. So, um, but. Yeah, that's, that's like the, the biggest thing. That's what I preach on is just staying true to yourself, just as, as you said. So, but yeah, take a moment at a time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so as we wrap up things here, uh, Kaylee, Pat, Josh, thanks for joining us on Senior Spotlight. Uh, we'll see you all at the Senior Sports Awards Assembly later this spring. So we're excited for that. Kaylee, good luck with the rest of your season. We'll see you tomorrow night for your game here, Havoc game against Hood. Uh, thanks for joining us on episode number five. Have a great week, everybody. Go Pride.